We're through week three of the NHL season, and what were once considered to be mere hiccups or bad starts are becoming full-blown concerning trends now that October is ending. Teams like Utah, who started off so hot and promising, have trailed off recently, while other teams that started slow, like the Hurricanes, Avalanche, and Golden Knights, have found their footing in recent weeks. So let's see how the power ranking slash tier list has shaken out. As a reminder, read the tiers right to left. The teams on the left are the best in that tier, and the tiers will be changing every single week. And we'll start at the bottom. Last week, the Sharks and the Blackhawks were in the giga-ass tier, but after this week, it is very, very clear that the Sharks stand alone. They're not even giga-ass, Without Macklin Celebrini, this team is just pathetic, honestly, to watch. So they are alone in their own shark tier, and God willing, no other team joins them this season. Just above them in the ass tier, the Chicago Blackhawks join the Ducks, Blue Jackets, and Flyers, all teams that honestly the other team should be ashamed of losing to. And just above those teams, we have the Frisky, but I don't believe tier, which features two Canadian teams the Montreal Canadiens and the Calgary Flames for different reasons. The Flames obviously started off very strong. Last week, the Flames went 1-3, their only win coming in the shootout against the Pittsburgh Penguins, and yeah, their three losses were two really good teams, Carolina, Winnipeg, and Vegas. But honestly, I thought coming into the season that the Flames would be a massive rebuild project. They've overachieved so far. I've wanted to believe in them, but after going 0-3 last week, I just don't. And as for the Canadiens, well, they're 500 along with everybody else in the Atlantic Division. And you look at how they did last week 2-1, and one, the teams they beat, St. Louis and Philadelphia, not exactly world beaters, but they got absolutely obliterated by the New York Rangers. Leads me to consider the Montreal Canadiens' hopes for the season, the same as Santa Claus, I don't believe in it. Now above those two teams, we have four bad teams, Buffalo, Utah, Detroit, and Pittsburgh. Utah and Pittsburgh were two of the biggest droppers from the last week. Starting with Utah, the team that dropped off the most of any team last week, 0-3-1. That overtime loss coming to San Jose, this team did not have the most difficult of schedules. They played Ottawa, a really Colorado team, LA, and San Jose, as I mentioned, couldn't win any of them. These are the kinds of games that if you want to prove you're a good team, Utah, you have to start reeling off some wins. And as for Pittsburgh, yeah, they just finished a Western Road swing, but they went 0-3-1 on that swing and gave up at least three goals in every single one of them. The only point they got was a shootout loss to the Calgary Flames. Yeah, Edmonton and Vancouver very talented teams, but the Penguins got waxed in those games. This is just a bad team that honestly needs to rebuild. Above them, we have two teams who, in my opinion, are not bad, but they are down bad. That's the Predators and the Bruins. We talked a lot about Nashville and how they struggled to start the season. They did kind of right the ship, picking up points in all their games last week, but the Bruins have been struggling. Yeah, they did beat Toronto on Saturday in overtime, but they are 500 on the season. Negative goal differential on the year. Swayman's underperforming. They're getting very limited offensive production from everybody, including Pasternak. It's just a rough scene right now for the Boston Bruins. I have faith that that talent will be able to pull itself out of the pit, but for right now, they are down bat. Next up, we move to the solid tier where we have the Wild, Islanders, Senators, Capitals, Kraken, Blues, and Kings. Rough week for the Kraken. They dropped down a little bit. I thought that they had a very rough schedule going up against Colorado, Winnipeg, Carolina, but only getting one point out of those three games does drop them down to 500. But above those solid teams, we have two teams that in my opinion are back from the dead in the Vegas Golden Knights and Colorado Avalanche. Vegas might surprise a lot of people, but I considered Vegas to be a true contender going into this year, and they entered last week just one game over 500 at 3-2-1. and one. They rattled off four straight wins in which they scored at least five goals in every game. And yeah, not the hardest of competition. They beat the Kings, Senators, Sharks, and Flames. But if you're a good team, you gotta beat the bad teams on your schedule, and they did and they did so very convincingly. For the Avalanche, it's just astounding what happens when you get quality goaltending, isn't it? Yeah, they didn't get that last night against the Blackhawks. They lost 5-2, to two, and that knocked them down a lot more, which is why I'm not prepared to put them back into the contenders tier. But this last week, they beat Seattle, beat Utah, beat Ottawa, so they seem to have at least stabilized for now. In the tier above these two teams, we have the Oilers, who I've ranked higher than both of them. I still believe in the talent of this team, and I just keep thinking this is exactly what happened last year. They got off to a a horrific start that was buoyed by terrible goaltending. Probably they're not going to fire the coach this year, but I'm not going to get suckered into believing that this team is just completely garbage when they made the Western Conference Finals last year, and in my opinion, improved their roster largely. But that said, I can't put the Oilers in the contenders or elite tier. They get dropped down a little bit. But that contenders tier is filled with teams that I really like, like the Devils, Canucks, Panthers, Maple Leafs, and Hurricanes. 
The Hurricanes were the biggest riser of any team last week. They'd gotten off to a bit of a shaky start at 2-2 two two entering last week, but then they rattled off four wins, including some quality ones over Edmonton and Vancouver. Yes, they had to go to overtime to take them, but they beat two very good teams, and they also beat Calgary and Seattle. And it's scary that despite losing all that talent in the offseason, the Hurricanes just look like they're back and still rolling the same as they had been in 2023. And for the Panthers, I underestimated this team yet again coming into the season. I didn't pick them to miss the playoffs, but I didn't think that they would be quite as good as they are. But when you beat the New York Rangers and New York Islanders and take care of business against the Buffalo Sabres, that's impressive. I got to give it to them. I put them in the contenders tier. Yeah, they lost to the Wild. That does drop them down quite a bit. But they are four games over 500. And man, what else can you say about Sam Reinhardt continuing to find another gear in his resurgence down in Sunrise? And that leaves us with four teams in the elite tier. The Rangers and Stars are now joined by the Winnipeg Jets and the Tampa Bay Lightning. The Lightning might be a shock to a lot of people, and I considered putting them in the contenders tier, but they beat last week the Devils and Caps, two at the very least very solid teams. But the big news is, of course, the Winnipeg Jets. I've been reluctant to put them into the elite tier because they hadn't beaten anybody but they rattled off another three wins against yes not incredible competition the blues kraken and flames and even though they did finally drop a game it's to a quality contender in the maple leafs at eight and one i have got to put them in that elite tier 